Just like the king whose touch turned everything to gold, this deep learning model that we're about to explore is absolutely golden. We're about to take a look at Midas. What's happening guys? Welcome to another episode of Code That, where I try to build a ridiculous amount of stuff in a ridiculously short time frame. In today's episode, we are going to be taking a look at a deep learning model called Midas, which allows us to do something called monocular depth estimation. This basically means that we can take a camera and use deep learning to determine how deep or far away from a camera a particular object is. We're going to be doing this in real time using a number of libraries. Specifically, we are going to be leveraging PyTorch, OpenCV, and Matplotlib to do a little bit of side-by-side -side visualization. But where would you use a model like this? Well, there's actually quite a fair few applications. If you're trying to do things like field based based mapping or navigation, this is a great model because it allows the camera or the sensor to determine how far a particular object is from it, so you don't hit it. But enough on that, let's get back to code that. And as per usual, we've got a couple of rules. First and foremost, I'm not going to be allowed to take a look at any existing code, stack overflow or use GitHub Copilot. If I do, it's a one minute time penalty. That brings us to the time limit. I'm gonna have 15 minutes to build this up from scratch and if I don't make it, it's going to be a $50 gift card to you guys. But we've got one little additional twist to this challenge. Namely, we are going to be coding this up on a Nvidia Jetson Nano, which has been so graciously provided by Seed Studio. Again, if you wanna go and check out some amazing hardware for IoT based devices, edge machine learning or edge deep learning applications, highly recommend you go and check out Seed Studio. They've got some absolutely great devices, including Jetson Nanos, Jetson Xaviers. Go and check them out, link in the description below. Anyway, time to get to this challenge. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty guys, 15 minutes on the clock. Let's go. All right, so the first thing that we are going to go on ahead and do is import a bunch of dependencies. So import dependencies so we are going to import cv2 which is going to give us open cv we are then going to import torch and we also need matplotlib so from uh, actually it's going to be import matplotlib.pyplot as plt okay then the next thing that we actually need to do is download the midas model so there's two parts to this so we need to download the Midas model itself, there's a couple of different tiers. There's a small, medium, and a large version. We're gonna use the small one because we're on a small device. We also need to download the transform. So first up, let's uh, download the models. So we're able to get these from Torch Hub. So download the uh, Midas models and it's M-I-D lowercase s. All right, so we then go, uh, oh Lord, uh, Midas equals torch.hub.load. And then the full line is intel dash dash isl forward slash m i d a s and then we want to download the small one so that we need to pass through the second parameter or positional argument which is m i d a s underscore small so that should give us the small midas model we then go midas dot two i couldn't get this working on cuda namely i was just running out of time because i think i've got an older version of jetpack we need to have uh, Python 3.7 to be able to use a library that's dependent or Midas relies on called Tim. So I couldn't get that running. So we can still definitely use it on CPU. So if you're running it on a Raspberry Pi, should be all good. Um, let's just minimize this to begin with. All right, so we've got Midas Torch Hub load. So this is going to download the actual model. We then need to bring in the transforms. Let's close this for now. So we've got a bit more room. Okay, so that is the model loaded. We then bring in transforms. So these are going to be like a transformational pipeline that allows us to take in the image that we get from our video camera or whatever webcam we're using and transform it to get it ready for doing monocular depth estimation with Midas. All right, so we're going to go torch.hub.load and then we go intel-isl forward slash m-i-d-a-s and then we want to bring in the second positional argument. Let's make sure my head's not covering that. Transform, transforms. And then we go uh, transform. We want to grab the small version of the transform because we're using the Midas small uh, model over here. So it's going to be transform. Actually, this should be transforms. Yeah, and this is going to be transform. So we're going to go grab all of our transforms and we're going to go uh, small underscore transform. Perfect. All right. So that is our transforms now done. We can save that. So right now, this is going to give us our model. This is going to give us our transformers. So, uh, let's say input transformational pipeline. Okay. And then now what we need to do is hook into OpenCV. Hook 
into OpenCV. So we're going to create a new capture. So I'm going to set cap equals to CV2 video capture. You would have seen me do this one a bunch of times before. This is going to be capture and we want capture device zero. So that's just, I've just plugged in a Logitech stream cam directly into the Jetson Nano. It seems to work pretty well. And then we're going to say while cap dot is opened. We then want to do a little bit of CV2 magic. So what do we want to do? We first up want to read the frame from our video capture device. So we're going to call ret frame equals cap dot read. And then we want to, we want to render it back to the user. So we're going to say CV2 dot IM show. We're just going to show the raw frame. We don't need to do anything too fancy. We need to name our frame. So CV2 frame. Okay, and then uh, we need to have a wait key. So CV2, uh, actually, if CV2 dot wait key pass through our check and 0xff equals equals forward Q. I dug into what this meant. I forgot. I'm going to double check and I'll drop it in the comments. But you basically need this wait key to be able to give CV2 a chance to update the frame. So um, and then, so if we hit Q on our keyboard, this is effectively going to shut down the loop. So it's going to, we want to release our capture. So it's, we're going to run cap.release and then cv2.destroy all windows. So that should shut stuff down. How are we doing for time? 10 minutes. Oh, we are doing okay. We interrupt your regular programming to tell you the courses from Nick is officially alive. If you'd like to get up and running in machine learning, deep learning, and data science, head on over to www.coursesfromnick to find the latest and greatest. I'm also going to be releasing a free Python for data science course in the upcoming weeks, so be sure to stay in the know. But if you're ready to hit the ground running, well, I highly recommend you check out the full stack machine learning course. This goes through seven different projects, 20 hours of content, all the way through full stack production ready machine learning projects. Head on over to www.coursesfromnick forward slash bundles forward slash full stack ml and use the discount code youtube50 to get 50 percent off back to our regular programming all right cool so that is looking all right and then what we can do is we can try running this so we're going to run python make sure python python 3 uh midas cv.py make sure my head's not covering that so this should download the model successfully so download it from torch hub but it should also open up an open cv window and render a capture from our webcam this is looking okay all right that's good so that's that's my head over there that's using my second webcam so i'm recording the video on this one this one's plugged into the Jetson nano that looks good so we're at least capturing our frame we're going to now take this frame pass it to our midas model and do monocular depth estimation so you're actually going to see it do all this magic Okay, so we want to hit Q to shut that down. What we now want to do is we want to do a little bit of transformation to, to use our Midas model. So, all right, this is where it gets tricky. So, um, transform input for Midas. So, we're first up, we need to change the color order. So, we're going to go image equals cv2.color. Uh, no, cv2.cvt. Oh, my gosh. Uh, CV2, <laughs> come on, give me type hinting. CV2.CVT color, we're then going to pass through the frame. CV2.color underscore BGR2 RGB. So it needs to be sent through to the Midas model as RGB. Before we do that, we need to go and send it to our transforms. This is going to do all the pre-processing that we need to do in order to be able to send it to Midas. Okay, so we're going to call um, image batch. And we're going to say transforms, or transform, transform, not transforms. We are then going to go and pass through that image and we're going to send it to CPU. So this is going to be the device that we're using. If you've got CUDA installed, you can substitute CUDA here and you can substitute CUDA here. Okay, so that is our image batch now transformed. There's, we're not going to see any results of that just yet. So what we now need to do is make a prediction. Make a prediction. And then we can run uh, with torch dot no actually i should probably also say so model so over here was re, re, bleh, over here we've written midas dot two cpu that's going to send the midas model to our cpu midas dot eval effectively uh removes things like batch norm and dropout so it removes the training regularization steps that we use when we go and perform inference so that's why we've gone and called eval there 
Um, so transforms or small transform is grabbing the small transform. So now I'm going to run torch.nograd to be able to go and perform inference. And then we are going to go and make a prediction. So we're going to create a variable called prediction, D I D T I O N. And we're going to call Midas. And uh, do, do, do we are going to pass through image batch. So now if we just let's just print out a prediction. Prediction. Okay. If this works, we should get like a bunch of numbers, effectively a NumPy array. Actually, yes. Let's try that. Okay. So if we go and run Midas 3, uh, Python 3 to Midas CV.py, let's see what this looks like. How are we doing for time? Seven minutes. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, so we're getting predictions. So you can see that we're printing out the tensors. So it's a little bit slower, but that's perfectly fine. We're doing some hardcore GPU stuff. So this looks like it's frozen, but it's just taking its time to process each frame. So you can see that we're definitely getting predictions. That's all of these numbers down here, but we need to visualize it to the frame so you guys can see all the depth, all right? So I'm gonna shut this down. We don't want these to keep running. All right, so I've just hit Q on my keyboard. That shuts it down. Ooh, this is intense. Okay, all right, so. All right, it's been a while since we've done code that, isn't it? Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to resize the output so we get a, a similar size output frame. So we can use the interpolate function from Torch to do this. So we can go and say output equals... No, no, no. So it's going to be prediction. This is from originally from the documentation. I've just tweaked it a bit. The prediction equals... Um, what do we want? So torch.nn.functional.interpolate right and then what do we do what do we do so we go we need to pass through our prediction dot unsqueeze so this should wrap it um so this is kind of like uh tensorflow expand dims we're going to unsqueeze one no not ten and then we want to pass through a couple of positional arguments or actually keyword arguments so size is going to equal image so we're going to grab our original image size the size of shape size all right we'll try size for now and see if that throws an error and then we're going to grab the first two values which should effectively give us height and width okay then we want to specify the mode and we're going to set that to bicubic so this is just resizing the image so it's uh, i believe it's upscaling it and then we want to say align corners i feel like this is where it could all go wrong I All right, and then we are going to then say squeeze to get return a single value. Oh no, don't don't show that, don't show that. Okay, we don't need that open right now. We don't have enough room on the screen as it is. Okay, that looks good. And then we, what we want to do is we want to create a variable called output, and we're going to say output is equal to prediction uh, dot two. I think I uh, know prediction dot cpu dot numpy. So we want to grab the numpy value back. All right. Now, if I print out output, this should look promising. So let's go and run this code again. I'm just printing out the output. So we should see the values down here. Four minutes. Well, this is going to be so close. Oh my God. Oh my God. I've been watching too many memes lately. Oh no. Into object is not subscriptable. Uh, no 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 this cannot be happening all right is it I, th I think it's shape it's not size we still got to do the rendering but that's like three lines of code i think okay that's looking promising we're getting our values back that is our output shut this down shut this down stop all right so what we need to now do is we need to run um, do, 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 should be plot dash I'm show, and then we are going to pass through our output to here. We can stop printing it out. We don't. Uh, we'll leave it printing. It looks cool. Um, and then we need to give matplotlib some time. Actually, have we imported matplotlib? Yeah, we have. We need to give matplotlib some time to actually go and make an update. So to do that, we can run plot dot pause and then pass through a time. So zero point zero 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 one. And then right down here, we need to run. So outside of our loop, we need to run plot.show to be able to go and render the results. If, if this should be it. So if I run in Python 3, Midas CV.py, hands off the keyboard. How we're looking. Oh, 
I think we've no. Yes, guys, take a look. So that, that is the depth. So the brighter areas actually represent us being closer to the screen. So you can see that it's picking up the mic. It's representing the green screen as being further away. So I can put down the green screen. I think we've made it, guys. So take a look. So it should pick up that my background is super far away. Let me move these so you can see them side by side. Pretty sick. So you can see it's picking up my TV in the background. It's picking up the, the what's called that all of the kitchen is super far away. How cool is that? That is monocular depth estimation with Midas, guys. We've absolutely nailed it. Take a look. So I can move around and you can see it's actually picking. This is running on the Jetson Nano, on the CPU. So imagine if we got CUDA running, it would be so much faster. And it's definitely possible. I've seen it. I've seen it done. It just needs a little bit of tweaking. And I think a newer version of Jetpack. But take a look. We have successfully done it. I'm going to pause with a minute 48 still on the clock. I'm going to count that as a win, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed this episode of Code That. As per usual, all the code is going to be available on GitHub. Let's quickly do a review of what we wrote. So we went through a bunch of stuff. So that is it still running. It's popping up. So we went and imported our dependencies. So we can hit Q to shut this down. Or it can even come down here, hit C. All right, so we went and imported our dependencies. We then went and downloaded the Midas capabilities. We then went and used, or I didn't spell transformational, transformation. So we then went and grabbed the transformation pipeline. We hooked into OpenCV. We then went and made a prediction with the Midas model and reinterpolated it and rendered the Midas component using matplotlib. So that's what we're doing over here. So plot.im show. So matplotlib is rendering the Midas component. OpenCV is rendering just our webcam component. And that is it. And if just to run it, we can run Python 3 Midas CV.py. So I'm running Python 3.7 on this. I'll double check the actual, I'll, I'll show you the version of PyTorch that I'm using at the moment. So it's obviously for a Jetson Nano. Let's see this up and running again. It should pop up. Boom. Success. How cool is that? So there's obviously a ton of use cases for this. If you want to go and estimate how far away something is, you're doing some sort of robotics this is absolutely amazing. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in to Code That. I will catch you in the next one. A peace. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. This is something a little bit different. We tried it out on an Edge device to be able to go and apply some Edge machine learning applications with the NVIDIA Jetson Nano, which I thought was pretty cool. And thanks again for Seed Studio for sending me the Jetson Nano so we can go and do a little bit of machine learning on it. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.